Hey y'all, Eric here with a, another one. I wanted to make a quick video on how I install St. Augustine plugs. We have that front area that I'm going to install today. Wanted to make this just a quick video how to so you can get out there and start plugging your lawn the way I know to be most effective. So without any further ado, please like and subscribe. Let's get right into it. So first things first, when you get your plugs home, uh, whether they're delivered or you get them from your local retail store, what I like to do is uh, get them out of the box or take them out of your car and just water them uh, in an area that gets uh, partial sun, not full sun. Uh, these did not look too hot when they were delivered, but watered them once a day, gave them a good soak for two days. I would suggest at least two days uh, just to let them get acclimated to your area, um, you know, depending on how far away they were shipped from. It helps a ton in making sure that they're not damaged going into transplant because transplant is very stressful. So these are looking great. Let's go look at the plot where we're going to plug and prep that area. So here is the area that we are going to plug today. It is about a 200 square foot area. We do have some uh, fescue patches here. That's going to be the extent of my prep here. I'm going to do a light drag of a rake uh, to get some of these dead stolons out. But really, I'm not too worried about that. What I'd like to do is take this chance to get these fescue heads out of here. Um, and as I'm looking, right, since this is a kind of a repair, there are areas where there's St. Augustine coming out so we got to keep that in consideration when we're plugging we don't want to plug right on top of these areas because they're already growing but there's definitely just some bare sparse areas so uh, let's first prep this area and then we'll start installing so got a lot of that those dead stolen's out and uh, the fescue as you can see still leaving some of that green that's coming up. I'm really only doing to this creek line here, ditch line. Um, I'm gonna let everything else grow out. Uh, so right now, after I'm done prepping, I am going to water. I watered last night, and we actually got some rain last night too. So it's pretty soft. Um, I was able to pull those fescue heads out pretty easily, but um, this will help keep dust down before we start drilling. All right, well, this is everything I'm gonna need from this moment forward. Prepped everything, watered it down a bit. And uh, what we have is obviously our St. Augustine Palmetto. That's what I have on my whole property. Um, bought these in cases of 16 plugs from Seed World. I used them before when I uh, plugged 6,000 square feet. Uh, they're a great group. If you call them and you're doing a large project, they will give you a significant discount. Um, I can't tell you what that is because I don't know what that'll be for you, but I'll tell you, they knocked down a lot on price when I did my big project a couple years ago. So I went back to them again and it was less expensive than any other site that I could find because I'm always looking for the cheapest prices. We got the 13, 13, 13. This is all purpose. I just grabbed this at Lowe's a couple months ago. I've used the last of it for this project. You can use a 10, 10, 10 starter, starter fertilizer, but I do suggest using something like a 10, 10, 10, 13, 13, 13. Um, this is an empty miracle Grow shake and feed. I just filled this with the 13, 13, 13. That'll come in handy as we drill the holes. We can just sprinkle a little bit of 13, 13, 13 inside of the holes that we have drilled. Speaking of the drill, just a standard DeWalt or whatever, you know, Milwaukee, whatever type you have, doesn't matter. And this is actually a two in just, just under three inches. Now these plugs are three by three. I'm gonna be squeezing each plug uh, to uh, make sure the roots aren't too compacted when I shove them into the holes. So they're not exactly three inches uh, by three inches when I put them in the hole. So I make a little bit smaller hole. I can always make the hole bigger um, if I want to with this auger. Uh, it's tougher to make it smaller if you want to go quickly. That's my thought process behind that. And it worked really well 
on the last plug row. All right, so we're here. We're just gonna start in this corner, kind of work our way back, part of the shadows, but just trying to get this uh, done. And uh, time's really not on my side. Uh, but uh, we're gonna make the holes now. You can plant them up to 12 inches apart, 14 even. And I did that when I did my big plug grow. Um, I was I had a budget for the project and I had hit that budget. Um, this is a small project and I want them to grow fast together because uh, I saw some Bermuda as I was pulling stuff up, not a surprise. So I wanna try and close as many gaps as I possibly can. I definitely don't want to go in an area like this and drill right through um, existing St. Augustine. So what I'm gonna do is just try to plant things about six inches apart, six to eight. Um, and that'll ensure that this stuff is gonna grow together really quickly. So go in and you're just gonna start to drill slowly. And you only wanna go about three inches deep. And that's it. You can go right here. Like, Eric, why'd you go so far away? Well, if you look in between, there's St. Augustine right there. So the goal here is, is to uh, get as close as I can to either existing St. Augustine or another hole if it's a total bare spot, uh, but no less than six inches apart, just so I can spread these things out as much as I possibly can while still getting as much coverage. All right, now that we've made our holes, you can see they don't look super even, or yeah, they don't look super even. Um, they're a little bit scattered and that's because there's areas where there's St. Augustine growing in between. We're gonna take our shaker with a 13, 13, 13 and literally just shake inside each hole we make. As you can see, some of these holes aren't perfect and that's okay. We're gonna step on the plug once we plant them and water deeply so that everything settles so that there's no air gap in between the dirt and the root system because you don't want any root rot or fungus to get into there. And this all the way around. So this is the easiest part of the operation. You're gonna take your little flat of plugs, flip them over, shake out the plugs like so. And these things are pretty durable. Um, you know, but I would just pour out a flat at a time. When we did the big project, we were dumping them out like crazy. We planted over 2,800 of these. But um, you're gonna take them, and then this is optional. Um, you don't have to do this. There's conflicting opinions, but we did it on the last one, is take a, a knife or some sort of blade and just break the roots up a little bit. I've got this old razor on a utility knife, so I didn't pull out a new one for something like this. I'm just ruining it, but at least I'm cutting it and uh, cross them. And uh, just helps the roots break free because they're pretty root bound, as you can tell. You just want to get get in there, let them breathe a bit, allow the sand to escape as well. To again try to fill that gap between the uh, the dirt um, and the root ball. And uh, these are looking beautiful. When I'm done doing this. We'll uh, we'll put them in the ground. As you can see, I have uh, got one of the plugs in my hand and literally you just drop it in the hole and 
step on it. And we're gonna do this, as you can see, I got started over there. And we're gonna do it all across. And I'll see you when I'm done. All right, well, we have them installed. And uh, now we are just going to water them deeply. Again, what we're trying to do is uh, close the gap, if any, in between the root ball and uh, the soil. Um, this will also help to soak in the loose dirt around the plugs, fill in any holes there. But I'm going to water this. And then I'll uh, I'll come back and show you the uh, finished product. Well, there we have it. Looking good. Feeling good about it. So I put down about two inches of water in this area. I actually had some left over, so I put it on the other side where it's thin as well, just to speed up that process. But as you can see, I have them tucked around anywhere between six and eight inches apart. I'm really excited about the way that it turned out. Whew, man, that is a job. Super excited that it is uh, completed and uh, we're on to maintenance. So what I'm going to be doing is watering at least once a day on hotter days. If we get above 80, 85, I'll probably water twice a day. Mind you, I'm only going to be watering three or 400 square feet um, because I did put some other, uh, put some plugs on the other side as well because I had a, a little bit of a surplus. Rather order too many than not have enough. Um, reason why I do that, just to keep everything moist, you know, allow uh, the roots to grab on. That's just going to uh, allow uh, the, the plugs to uh, spread and uh, we are gonna be getting really warm. Um, we do have some rain in the forecast, which is always exciting. And um, we'll keep this mowed as well. Um, when we can't mow, uh, we'll use scissors and just kind of clip the, the tops of the plugs. That'll force growth outward. Uh, but just stay tuned. Uh, stay uh, watching this channel because I'll be giving updates just like I did a couple years ago. And uh, we'll watch these babies grow like crazy. And um, it's going to be exciting to see how fast this stuff comes together. So just want to thank you so much for joining me on another week, another project, and uh, hope you're having fun in your lawn this weekend, and we will see you on the next one. Bye now.